In this video, I'll teach you how to create a custom field with a formula that calculates percent of duration variance. In a previous video, I taught you how to create a duration variance view. In this video, I'll show you how to add an additional column to that view. In this column, Microsoft Project will calculate the percent of duration variance for each task and display the results using easy to understand graphical indicators. So let's get started. Before I talk about how to create the percent duration variance formula in Microsoft Project, Let's first talk about how the software calculates duration variance. Interestingly enough, the software uses a very simple formula. Duration variance equals the current duration of each task minus the baseline duration for each task. Suppose a task has a current duration of 15 days. And suppose that task also has a baseline duration of 10 days. Duration variance would be calculated as 15 days minus 10 days equals 5 days. Now to take that a step further, to write a formula to create percent of duration variance, we'd use the following. 100% multiplied by duration variance divided by baseline duration. Using the numbers from the original example, percent of duration variance would be calculated as 100% times 5 days divided by 10 days, or 50%. Now it's important to note that the percent duration variance formula in Microsoft Project absolutely must account for two situations. They are tasks with no baseline saved and tasks that are milestones. The reason we need to account for these two situations is to eliminate the possibility that the formula will generate a division by zero error. So this is very important and we must test for these two conditions in the formula. The formula that I personally like to use for percent of duration variance is in a custom number field and I show the formula on the screen right now but it's a lot of information to digest all at once, so let me show you how to create the formula step by step. The first part of the formula is this, an if statement that tests to see if the baseline finish value is NA. We write it as IIF baseline finish equals Proj date value NA. Now what I like to do is if this value is true, that means that the task does not have a baseline saved. So I like to return the number minus 16,000, which would be a ridiculously large number that would never ever appear in a real-world project. Frankly, you can use any number you want. I like to use minus 16,000. So if the baseline finish field contains an NA, the formula returns a value minus 16,000. But now, if a baseline has been saved, then the second part of the formula is this. We test to see the task is a milestone. To test for a milestone, it's very simple. We use the statement IIF milestone. If the task is a milestone task, 
we'll need to return the value of zero for percent of duration variance because milestones will not have duration variance. If both of these situations are false, then the next test is no test at all. We return the value of the formula 100 multiplied by duration variance divided by baseline duration, as I discussed on the very first slide. So now let's go ahead and take a look to see how to do this in Microsoft Project. To create the custom field with the formula, complete the following steps. Click the Project tab to display the Project ribbon, and then click the Custom Fields button in the Properties section of the ribbon. In the Custom Fields dialog, click the Type Pick list and select the Number Type. Then select your first available number field. I'll use Number 1 since that's not currently in use. Then click the Rename button to display the Rename field dialog. I'm going to give this a short name, percent dur ver, for percent duration variance, just to keep it short and simple. Click the OK button when finished. To enter your formula, click the Formula button in the dialog. In the Formula dialog, you can use field names off the Field Pick List button. You can use functions off the functions pick list button, and you can also use mathematical and Boolean operators shown above those buttons. To keep it real simple, I'm just going to copy and paste the formula that I showed you in my PowerPoint presentation. So there's the formula, just the way I presented it. So enter your formula and then click the OK button. Microsoft Project will warn you that any values currently entered in this custom field will now be deleted because all the values from this point forward will be calculated using the formula in the field. That's a good thing, so click the OK button. Next, you'll want to select the option Use Formula to make sure the formula is used on summary tasks in your project. You can optionally select the Roll Down Unless Manually Entered option in the Calculation for Assignment Rows section. Next, you'll want to enter your Graphical Indicator criteria. To do this, click the Graphical Indicators button in the dialog. To save you time and to spare you the boredom, I've already pre-entered the graphical indicator criteria so I can talk with you about them. Notice that the very first test in this dialog is equals minus 16,000 and the image displayed is the question mark. That is what I'm using to display for any task that doesn't have a baseline on it. That needs to be your very first test. From there, you can go ahead and begin testing for different sizes of duration variance, beginning with the largest duration variance and working all the way down to the smallest duration variance. These tests are entirely up to you and your organization's processes for project management. So here's some examples. If duration variance is greater than 100%, we get the red unhappy face. If it's greater than or equal to 50%, in other words, it's between 50% all the way up to 99.999%, then we've got the red stoplight indicator. So let me just work my way down here, and you can see what I'm looking for. Greater than or equal to 25 is the yellow unhappy face. 
greater than or equal to 10% is the yellow stop light. Greater than or equal to zero gets the green stop light. And less than zero gives the green happy face or smiley face. What that is is negative variance, which is actually a very good thing. It means duration variance is less than zero. That means the duration is shorter than originally planned in the baseline. Now, in the dialog, you'll also want to select the checkbox, Show Data Values and Tooltips. You do that so that if somebody wants to float their mouse pointer over one of the graphical indicators in the project, then Microsoft Project will actually display the number that is being represented by the graphical indicator. So up at the top of the dialog, that's for all non-summary rows. That's going to be for all detailed tasks and milestones. Summary rows, you'll need to select that option and then decide, do I want to use the same graphical indicator criteria? If so, select this checkbox, Summary Rows Inherit Criteria from Non-Summary Rows. Or, if that's not what you want, you can build your own set of criteria that is specific for summary tasks. I want to keep it simple, so I'll select the checkbox, Summary Rows Inherit Criteria from Non-Summary Rows, and then I'll click the Yes button to confirm this action. You can see now how the graphical indicator criteria are all grayed out, so I can't change them. And then finally, go ahead and select the item called Project Summary. You have the same choices here. Do you want to use the existing criteria? If so, we'll select the checkbox with that option. Or do you want to build your own? This is specifically for the Project Summary Task Row 0 or Task 0 in your project. I'd like to keep it simple, so I'll go ahead and select the option Project Summary Inherits Criteria from Summary Rows, and again, I'll click the Yes button to confirm my action. Once again, you can see how all of the criteria are now grayed out because they're inherited from below. Once you've finished building your graphical indicator criteria, Go ahead and click the OK button, and in the Custom Fields dialog, click the OK button again. If you created the Custom Duration Variance view that I demonstrated in a video by the same name, then you'll probably want to add your new custom field to the table that is used in that custom view. Here's how to do that. Right click on the Select All button and choose the custom table for that view. In my case, it goes by the name of Underscore Duration. Drag your split bar over to the right if you need to to display at least a couple columns in that custom table. Then right mouse click in the Duration Variance column header and choose the Insert Column item on the shortcut menu. In this list of available fields, locate your custom field. In my case, it's right up near the top because I use the percent sign in the name of the field, percent dir there. That will display the custom field in your custom table. If you're anything like me, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to the display of custom fields. I really think that these graphical indicators should be centered in the column, don't you? So if you're like me, do the following as well. Right click in the column header and choose Field Settings on the shortcut menu. In the Field Settings dialog, Click the Align Title Pick List button and choose Center. Click the Align Data 
pick list button and choose center. You might also want to widen or narrow your custom field a little. I'm going to widen mine to 14 and then click the OK button. That'll add your new custom column to the custom table used in the Duration Variance view. After creating the custom field and optionally adding it to the table in the Custom Duration Variance view, there's one more step you'll need to do. You'll need to click File, Info, Organizer to display the Organizer dialog. Click the Fields tab at the top of the dialog to display the Fields page. In this dialog, you will find your custom field in the list on the right which means in the active project. But in order to use this custom field in every new and existing project moving forward, you need to select the custom field and then click the Copy button to copy it into your global.mpt file. This way you are assured of being able to use this custom field in every one of your projects. If you had previously created the custom duration variance view that I demonstrated in the video by the same name, and you added the custom field to the table in that custom view, then you will also need to do the following. Click the Tables tab to display the Tables page of the dialog. On the right, Select the underscore duration table, or whatever you named it, and then click the Copy button. Now, if you followed the directions in my previous video, that table will already be in your global.mpt file. However, it will not include the new custom column that we just created. So what you'll need to do is to click the Yes button to update that table. When you're finished, go ahead and click the Close button, and then you can press the Escape button to navigate back to your Microsoft Project schedule. Well, now you know that if the percent duration variance column displays a bunch of red stoplight indicators, you know that you've got a bunch of duration values that are going long. I sure hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please consider subscribing and clicking the notifications button. And if you have others in your organization who could benefit from this video, I trust you will share my YouTube channel with those colleagues. And as always, I'll see you in my next video.